good afternoon, good morning to all of you joining us today. I appreciate the time that you were spending learning more about our Starship solution. Um, as you may know by now, um, you know, our ship gear platform that you all are using today um, is going to be sunset here at the end of 2023. Um, and we are talking more about the Starship solution and the features and benefits that will all that will be offered to all of you by moving to that new solution with QuickBooks Enterprise. So I'm going to go through a very short uh, presentation here, and I'm going to do a quick demonstration of our Starship solution um, with QuickBooks to give you kind of a you know sneak peek of what that can look like for all of you. Uh, and then for those of you interested after the webinar that want a more of a deeper dive, Jason uh, Ferguson is our account executive, and Will Oliver, one of our account managers, will be reaching out uh, to schedule those more one-on-one -on -one demos and, and providing quotes as needed uh, to those interested. So. Uh, with that being said, let's jump right into it. So, um, first and foremost, you know, we look at different shipping challenges when we look at Starship. You know, Starship's a full-blown shipping solution. It does a lot more, which you're about to see, than our ship gear platform does today. Um, so, when we look at different shipping challenges, you know, um, even though you're using ship gear, some of you um, might have LTL shipping, right? That you're doing outside of ship gear, which ship gear doesn't support today, where Starship does. So if you have to re-enter information, you know, for every single shipment that you might be doing on the LTL front, uh, maybe there's other shipments you're doing outside of ship gear, like post office, as an example. Um, again, that's where Starship can maybe assist you with. Um, again, websites, right? Uh, especially from an LTL rating perspective, if you're going to multiple websites or portals today to get a rate uh, with a ship with a carrier that's not integrated today, um, that's time consuming that's costing you money um, for every single one you have to go rate shop that's what you're about to see here with starship and where starship can help you alleviate that time and kind of make it uh, more streamlined for you again ease your way of managing ltl shipments that's what starship is designed to do being a multi-mode solution uh, having that capability of doing your parcel and ltl together um, and showing you what's the best option uh, for you to use for a specific shipment and then your shipping costs, right? You may be sitting there thinking, you know, how come UPS or FedEx has, you know, been, you know, increasing their rates, you know, their delivery surcharges are getting out of hand. Um, Post office is one of our uh, carriers supported in Starship where we offer you discounted rates that may be advantageous to you to start looking at um, to help reducing those costs. So that's just another option um, that you will get as a benefit to being a Starship user. So just a little bit about us. I mean, obviously you're all aware of who we are, how long we've been around. Um, Starship itself is our flagship product for those of you who didn't know that. Uh, many think ship gear has been because it's been around for 20 some odd years, but Starship's been around for 30 plus years. Um, and that's really our flagship solution. We've been in the QuickBooks space now since 2002. Um, we have one of the main diff questions I get asked a lot, what makes you different than other solutions? The main difference is we have a direct integration with Intuit. Um, we use their SDK um, APIs to connect. We don't have any connectors um, or third-party connectors, I should say, to make that QuickBooks connection. Everything we do with the QuickBooks space is a direct connection in real time. Um, obviously, we have over 35 years of building out various integrations to other ERPs. So some of you might be a QuickBooks user today but maybe looking to advance and get into something bigger as an ERP goes. We have other ERP integrations we do support um, that Starship would could tag along with as well. Um, and then, as I mentioned, multi-carrier, multi-mode, you know, really leveraging um, all of the ERP information, QuickBooks information to bring over so that way we can process specific documentation. In today's demonstration, I'm gonna demonstrate a quick international shipment um, so that way you can see how essentially um, we process your um, commercial invoice with the information coming in from QuickBooks, um, because again, we are pulling all the SKU information in from QuickBooks, which you don't have today. Again, um, just recently, 2023, we were uh, awarded by UPS as a premier partner. So it's a very established award. Um, we're very proud to receive this award. Um, we were one of, I think, five different solutions um, across, that are out there that have been uh, awarded such a, a prestigious award from UPS be, being a, um, uh, uh, a UPS ready provider 
um, supporting them in their um, efforts of you know efficiencies, right? Also keeping in line with the digital connections program or the former CTP program. So again, um, it's a great award um, and a great partnership we've established with UPS all these years. Um, and then also for those of you who might be um, you know thinking about QuickBooks, um, you're all QuickBooks users, and that's why you're on this demonstration. Uh, we also are a QuickBooks solutions provider um, where we can offer you any sort of maybe discounted licensing. Um, some may be looking to change their tiers. Some may be looking to add users. You can definitely speak to us about that. Um, we do have specific discounts we do provide for specific QuickBooks licensing needs, um, and we're happy to, to assist you if we can there. So let's talk a little bit about Starship and the kind of the multi-carrier strategy and some of the main features that we offer here. Obviously, live rate shopping, that's a big one. That's probably the, you know, the biggest key feature of Starship here, being able to show you everything in one platform, lowest to highest, be it based on your carrier selection, best way rules, you know, how to ship something um, in a best way scenario. Um, again, transit times will come through Starship, rates will come through in Starship. So it gives you as a shipper um, the best um, options to use if you choose to use them or stick with the original carrier of choice. Doing your parcel as well as LTL shipping in one place, consolidating all of those accounts um, here as well, giving you metrics, right? We have a full dashboard with you know, distribution maps, charts, reports. We give everything we can to you as a user so you can make informed decisions, make changes, um, maybe file their claims faster. We have a late deliveries report as an example. So we have all these metrics built in the Starship platform so you can make you know, these uh, educated decisions that you may not have access to today by using separate platforms. And then processing efficiencies, right? Just kind of, again, having everything in one place, not having to worry about to go to different portals as you are today with WorldShip or Ship Manager, um, having everything in one dedicated spot is definitely gonna improve that for you. Being able to customize your interface, um, not all you know, UIs will look the same, right? You may have certain fields you want to have shown versus others. So you have a full customizable interface to use at your leisure. Um, again, I talked about leveraging the line items coming in from QuickBooks. So we will pull individual SKUs um, versus header level detail that you all have today. Um, these items that we pull in from QuickBooks, um, we store in our database in Starship and they store things like your Schedule B number. Um, commercial invoice information for international, um, NMFCs or class for BOLs that are, are generated from Starship. Also, if you're shipping anything hazardous, we can save your hazmat profiles. All of this is done one time and there for future use, kind of streamlining that process for you ultimately. <clears throat> Some of you might be drop shippers. Um, we can simplify that drop shipping need, right? Having different sender IDs configured in Starship so we can reflect that on your bill of lading, your parcel labels, so that way it looks like it's coming from your uh, customer rather than yourself. Uh, again, if you have that drop shipping need, we're here to help set that up for you. <clears throat> and then others may be consolidating orders into one master shipment. Again, another feature Starship can assist with, combining multiple orders, putting them into a master shipment and shipping them as one, uh, and then updating those specific orders or invoices in QuickBooks um, as well for you. So kind of our QuickBooks integration, and what we really do here, what we update. <clears throat> so most of it is going to look probably the same as you have today with ShipGear. The main difference here is basically we have a whole array of fields we can write back to QuickBooks. So it depends on what you exactly want written. The majority of it will be tracking the shipped on date, uh, maybe a ship via code, um, the number of packages, we can do a whole lot more things like line items, how, what box has what items inside of it. So as you go into QuickBooks, you can easily detail how things were packed in the shipping department. Um, everything is in real time. Again, with the API we have connected with Intuit, everything's in real time. So the minute I ship something, it's written back immediately. Same thing, the minute I save something in QuickBooks, it shows up in your queue in Starship as well. Um, being able to update the freight cost, right, with either those contracted rates of yours or what we call applied rates, meaning that they could be marked up rates with rules that are established in Starship to be put back onto an invoice in QuickBooks. So again, if you are looking for that, 
uh, being able to update their marked up rates, um, we can help you do that as well. And then the other feature we have is we can, we can create a custom field in your QuickBooks environment, call it Starship Ship Status. That field is updated with the word processed. This allows us to remove the orders in the queue as they're shipped, so the shipper doesn't get confused of which ones are shipped or not yet shipped. It kind of alleviates that confusion and maybe even duplication uh, going forward. Um, and then people ask why cloud, right? Why do we got to go into the cloud environment, um, you know, these days? Um, many of you have been probably getting, you know, hit up from different companies. Digital transformation is here. It's been here for many years now. Um, it's starting to catch steam. A lot of applications are moving into the cloud because nobody wants to res uh, maintain servers any longer is the main reason, right? Um, also, cloud becomes essentially ultimately a cheaper option because we don't have all those IT upgrade needs, right? We get outside IT firms in to upgrade your environments every single year. Everything is always on the latest version with Starship, right? Those will happen overnight. You won't even notice something even occurred when you come in the following morning. Um, we give you access to unlimited users, all the carriers, right? So we're not gonna charge you individually for carrier modules. Those are provided to you as well. Um, you can manage seasonality. Starship is just like any online subscription that you may all have signed up for in the past. You have full control on what you pay, right? So if you have a peak season for three months and you have to go into a higher tier, but then want to drop it, you can do that very easily with the platform that's provided to you. Um, and then also restricting access to users. So you may have a shipper who you want only to be shipping, but not have access to your subscription portal so they can make changes to a plan. Um, or maybe the front office doesn't have access to shipping labels. That can be done here as well. Um, so really gives you the full control um, of how you wanna manage it from an administrator perspective um, ongoing. This is a quick um, slide to show you the various carriers. We have about 25 now, different applications, carrier applications we do support in Starship. So we have all the parcel carriers. We have some Canadian ones on here. We also have all of our LTL carriers along with our 3PLs that we support as well. Some of you may not see a carrier that you're working with on this slide, it's okay. Um, there are workarounds that we can offer to you um, to be able to work with that carrier and generate maybe a bill of lading uh, for that specific carrier in Starship. So if that's a need, definitely wanna speak to one of us about that and we can provide more information around it. And then just to give you a quick snippet of our dashboard and our kind of what that would look like, right? So here you can see up in the upper right, you have your full distribution map. So you can see there kind of pinpointing in real time where all of your um, shipments are going to um, across the country. So obviously the red areas are the hot zones. That's where you're shipping a lot of your product to. Then we get into greens and grays, right? That's where you have some product, but then you can see the gaps where you're not shipping any product. So it just helps from a, um, overall understanding of where customers reside, how do we establish maybe an additional location or two to get to those customers quicker. Um, also negotiation purposes comes into play. Hey, UPS, right? I ship a lot of product to the Eastern half of the US. I need to make sure my discounts reflect that. Um, so it helps you have the best negotiation possible. And then over there on the left, you see a bunch of various charts, high level, just breaking things down maybe total shipment pack, total shipments, packages, costs, et cetera, right? And then we get into reporting, right? If we need more detail as well. So I just wanna highlight these last couple slides here before I jump into a quick demonstration, but just really wanna kind of highlight the urgency that we're having with ship gear today. We are about now roughly eight to nine months away from the sunset date of ship gear. Um, so we're really letting our ship gear users know that really the time is now to act, right? Even though we still have eight to nine months, we still have approximately 1,500 customers still running on ship gear today um, <clears throat> that need to find a home. Um, and we expect the majority of those will all be moving to Starship. Uh, and if that happens, we will experience some huge backlogs the second half of the year to get them onboarded. Um, so again, a couple things to keep in mind as you make a decision. Um, there are no more bug fixes or enhancements being put into ship gear today. So if there happens to be an issue with ship gear um, that requires a future enhancement or a bug fix to be done, there is no more to be had, right? It is what it is at this point. 
um, essentially on its last lifeline. Um, so it's encouraged to get over to the new platform where all of our developers are focused on. Um, so that way you could take, have the best possible experience. The last version of Shipgear was just recently published as well, version 12 that works with the latest version of WorldShip. So just in case, and we don't expect it to happen, but in case if UPS does an upgrade later this year, um, there is no future upgrade of Shipgear gonna be released with it. We don't anticipate them doing an upgrade until sometime in January, February of 2024. Wouldn't typically do that, uh, but just wanna make everyone aware the last version of Shipgear has been released and out there for you to take advantage of, but that will be the last. Um, again, you're paying higher fees now. You've all seen the communication we released in October um, when the new increases went into effect for ship gear. Um, there are higher fees for limited integration with no additional enhancements. So it's encouraging to get onto Starship because some of you may pay end up paying less money on Starship um, and some may pay a little bit more than what you're paying with, with ship gear. But again, it all depends on where you fall in the tiers. Um, but again, you are paying higher amounts for limited integration. And then last point here, promotional pricing. Um, obviously, you'll see here we have some promotional pricing for the month of April, uh, but this promotional pricing, we you know, encourage you to take advantage of it as soon as you can uh, because we don't expect there to be much promotional pricing available after the second half of the year um, occurs. So um, definitely want to take advantage of any discounts that you're eligible for um, while it lasts. Again, I've already made a couple points here. Um, expecting that significant backlog of projects. We're already about three weeks um, for scheduling currently today. Um, for Starship, we had a huge march um, of ship gear conversions already. Um, so we're already about three weeks uh, in the backlog for scheduling of projects. Uh, but by the end of you know, July of 2023, August of 2023, there could be a time where we're several months in a backlog situation. Um, just based on the number of customers and the resources we have. Um, and there you can see, you know, we have basically some promotions this month where you can save 25% off your first year of subscription or a second option if you like to pay for two years, um, we give you a 35% off that subscription fee as well for both years. So um, definitely worth to take advantage of those incentives. And there you go. Okay, so let me uh, jump into a quick demonstration here. As we log into Starship, um, one thing you're gonna notice is you'll have a dedicated URL to your company. Um, and when you log in, all of these orders are in real time. I have my filter set on that um, custom field I mentioned a moment ago <clears throat> to look at only orders that have not yet processed for the day. These are my orders. I can scan in like you all have with ship gear <clears throat> or type in, or I can use a little truck icon off to the right. <clears throat> so in this case, <clears throat> everything's going to come into one screen for you. Um, and as that loads up, you're going to see that you're working for essentially from top to bottom. So up here, you'll have your sender ID, as I mentioned, where you can store different dropship profiles or have it default to your own. Up in the upper right will be the recipient section. In this case, I have this going international to kind of give you an international demonstration here up into Canada. Uh, but here you can see if anything is in red, like this is here, if you just kind of hover over, it's going to tell you what you're missing. And it's, this tells me I'm missing my contact name. So all I would have to do is either type it in here, you know, give it a name, or I can pull it in from QuickBooks as well if I had it mapped, right? And that red will go away very quickly for you. Um, the middle section is basically detailing the ship via. So again, we can map in your ship via here. This is going to UPS ground. This changes it to standard Canada as the service. Billing prepaid, you do have the ability of storing different third-party IDs for those third-party shippers. Um, we can store those in our database or map those account numbers in from QuickBooks, either one. But just to highlight in here, and I'm not gonna get into all these details on the demonstration today, uh, but here we can basically highlight who's prepaying the freight, who's gonna be paying duty and tax, um, off to the right, um, you can say who the broker is in case if it's not the carrier themselves, the importer of record. We have some NRI customers uh, maybe on here today. We can support NRI with UPS or FedEx um, as well. And then obviously this will be checked off for USMCA saying it's going to Canada. Um, this international tab is just building out your commercial invoice. So it's taking those totals from the line items coming in from QuickBooks and basically totaling them up, adding the freight charges to it, 
for an invoice total of $908 that duties and taxes will be based off of. So again, that will also be generated out of Starship. One thing to note for international shipments, we do support paperless invoicing with UPS, and we also support FedEx electronic trade documents. So if you want to send those electronically, you can as well and not have to worry about printing copies of documents. We have various terms of sale, right? So obviously delivery duty paid, X works, and all these terms are here for you to choose. Um, so whatever is applicable in your company, you can take advantage of here as well. Um, this section in the middle is, is really highlighting accessorials. Um, so things like insurance, we have quantum view for UPS built into here where we use more for exception purposes. Um, then uh, shipment and delivery will be um, done by eNotify, which is built into Starship. And I'll give you a sneak peek at that as well. Uh, but again, all of these options will change based on the carrier you've selected for you to choose either manually, or we can basically store conditions and have these auto triggered for them to appear um, for that specific shipment. And then down here is just breaking down how you wanna pack up items, right? So in this case, I'm using something called packaging scenarios, which you don't have to do, uh, but essentially I'm telling Starship how I want my items packed. And you can do that with you know single SKUs typically. So in this case, because I only have electrical cords and my cordless drill on my order, I basically told Starship, hey Starship, you know, because I had three um, electrical cords, only one can fit in each box. So in this case, it broke it down automatically for me, but you all have the option of moving items to different boxes. You can bring everything into one box and ship it that way. Really up to you how you wanna pack up items if you want to, uh, but this is one of the differences that you don't have with ship here today, um, is being able to do that. Um, packaging, we have a full packaging database that you can store ahead of time, all your different box names, which will correspond off to the right with your dimensions and weights. We do support dimensional weight as well. Um, that's what this column is here. It's doing the calculation for you um, with your dimensions um, and div dividing it by your DIM divisor to come up with the build weight of that shipment. Okay. Um, and then down here in the line item section uh, is just, again, all mappings from QuickBooks. Um, one thing I'll highlight real quick here, um, this is where we store at the item number all of the various pieces of information. Again, for LTL, we can store your NMFC or group names, your class, description. Also, you're going to have an international tab here because this is international order where we actually have your Schedule D number already saved, all the certificate of origin information needed that's going to generate for the specific shipment along with your commercial invoice. So again, that's put in there the initial time you bring this item in, saved, you never have to touch this again for future. Um, and then basically um, over here, you'll see the charges. Um, the charges are basically um, coming in, um, your negotiated rates, by the way, we're not providing you rates for UPS or FedEx, um, but these are your rates. We can show your published rates if we want, uh, but these are your negotiated rates. And then the applied rates are just a marked up rate. In this case, I have a 10% markup in which basically is gonna write back into QuickBooks to invoice your customer. You can have any type of rule you like. They can be by customer, whatever you want them to be, or one per, for everyone um, as well. So it's really up to you how you want to set those rules with the wizard we have built in here. And then the rate shop. The rate shop is essentially just going to allow you to hit this little blue button or this button. Um, you can set up a rate shop rule if you like, where you can auto run for you. Uh, but if again, if you hit the rate shop button, it just calls out to your carriers on your license that are available for that particular shipment and pulls in your rates um, for you. Um, now, if applicable, it will also show you both your parcel rates, and you can see I have a few LTL carriers here as well. It will also show my LTL rates, and which is the best option to ship into Canada. However, I have this sorted on the lowest rate possible. So in this case, I feel comfortable that UPS is the first in line. So it's going to tell me it's only $152. It's four business days. But if I scroll down right below it, FedEx can get there in three days but it's gonna cost me another almost $100 or more, right? So it's a really deciding factor is what's more important to you. And if you switch it, it's just checkbox, right? You check it off the FedEx, it changes into your FedEx account and you can print your FedEx labels at that point, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and ship and process this order. Um, we'll show you what the right back to. So now what's gonna happen is all your documents will print to your printer. So your labels, your commercial invoice, your USMCA forms, if you have all those printing, 
um, and then uh, the write back happens immediately um, into QuickBooks, right? So what you're going to see here, if I go back into my QuickBooks order, is there's my order and there's all my four tracking numbers I just processed. I have the service listed here. Also, I have things like line items. So I'm, I'm basically saying in box one, I had my cordless drill and then all my other boxes, I have my electric cords in. I'm also writing back those freight charges as well. That $167 freight charge is written back here, and I'm updating that ship status field I mentioned a moment ago as well to process so it removes it from my lookup window for future. Okay, um, and then just to give you a quick sneak peek at that eNotify template I was mentioning a moment ago, it's under our dashboard, right? But I'm not going to go through the dashboard too much since I already showed you a snippet. Uh, but I want to just show you quickly what you can send out to your customers proactively um, so they get at least an alert of the shipment coming to them. So again, you can make these e-notify templates, whatever you want them to be. We allow that, you know, really up to you to kind of say, hey, customer, expect this to come. And this is just an example, right, by UPS in this case, give them a PO number, a sales order number. Um, here's, you know, a couple tracking numbers with the items listed in each of them. Uh, and then maybe a marketing tool as well for a future order for your website or phone order, whatever you want that to be. These are hyperlinked. That way they can click on them and take them directly out to the UPS site. So they don't have to worry about, you know, copying and pasting, um, but really a cool neat tool so they can alleviate those calls coming into you potentially. So um, these can be sent out in real time or at the end of the day as well for you. Um, that's my recommendation personally, um, just so you can control if you need to turn them off or you know something arise you want to avoid that fire drill if the packages don't get picked up for any reason but with that being said um i'm going to stop there appreciate the time and look forward to having you join starship